Chapter 5151 Crushing a Future Threat You are listening at NovelFull.audio Amon's feet landed on the cracked ground, the scent of the disgusting slums filling his nose, tonight would be when he performed something he didn't want Tia to know. He could now hide his actions by turning on an option in his profile page labeled, Hidden Action, allowing him to speak with Tia, but she could not detect his actions or location. Amon felt horrible doing this and didn't want to mistrust that girl. However, before they met face to face, he needed to hide the dirty and darker things from her to avoid making her disappointed in him. Because there were many things, she told him that were wrong, from his cultivation technique and how it works to the true usage of his skills and the spirits. I imagine it's not her but the thing that brought her here that limited or changed her knowledge. My aura is increasing slowly. It seems that Tia's knowledge of me is wrong. I need to take notes about my cultivation technique in the profile and hopefully discover how it works. She claimed I absorb aura naturally, but how it moves and enters me is more like devouring. Then it's stored in my abdomen. For what reason I am not sure, but until I kiss or have sex with a female, it doesn't seem usable. Until I got my character profile cheat, that is. He wore a long coat with a mask covering his face. This didn't look strange and fit in well, thanks to a recent pandemic. The coat was dirty and unkempt to avoid standing out in the slums as he headed towards a small house with a blue roof. I will check after this. It seems to be the technique I wrote but never used, but I cannot be sure. Amon thought before his hands wrapped in black gloves gripped the wall of the blue house coming into view. The streets and alleys were filled with garbage, the stink of animal and human excrement filling the air while the sewage overflowed with murky brown and grey water. He slipped forward, currently only a single homeless man in the area. Schlick. A sharp claw pierced the man's neck, but the blood was kept inside his body, a black flame cauterizing the wound instantly as Amon pushed forward, his black boots dirty from the filthy ground, lightly squeaking in the mud. I will not apologize, your life was pathetic anyway, and I cannot afford to be seen. Amon's body faded into the mist, a few minutes later, a couple with strange hair and piercings passed the old man. When they saw his little tin full of coins, they tossed a small handful inside and walked past. He was not noticing his death due to the black flame in his heart forcing it to appear to beat and his lungs to move. This would only last a few minutes as the black dragon in his heart and tiger in his lungs would fade from his body within ten minutes. Once the couple vanished down the dark pathway, his body stood outside his target house. Poor quality brick and stone walls rotted and weathered with a makeshift wooden door with countless holes and cracks. The people of the slums lived in horrible conditions, but Amon was no Samaritan. This was the home of Ethan's father and a once powerful cultivator that would eventually regain his powers to support his son and help him find his mother from a higher realm. Or so the modified story went. Sizzle. Amon's fingers emitted a black flame that melted the cheap iron lock so fast that it didn't even drip onto the ground and was obliterated into ash. Slowly he crept into the house, his body partially ethereal thanks to constantly using the blink dot step to avoid any noise, the bottom floor was a mess, with alcohol bottles, burnt pans and dirty clothes everywhere. There were countless rats, but his flames spread out and burned their hearts to ash before they could squeak or give away his location. He steadily checked the rooms, wondering if he was on the old, disgusting sofa in a drunken coma, but sadly, he wasn't. Upstairs, huh? In some places, there were strange items that Amon remembered writing into his stories, they were like cultivation tools that detected intruders if they used chi or came close to them. However, with the black dragon chi, it seemed they couldn't detect it. Amon didn't know that his, hidden action, affected the world and people irrelevant to the main story. If he tried this later when Ethan was going to meet his father. Amon would have been discovered already, even his presence outside was vague, like a grim reaper only visible to animals and babies. Phew. Once he was upstairs, the scent of unwashed sweat and rotting food filled his nose, a disgusting mixture of sour and burning scents that made his nose and eyes sore. 
Wow. This is bad. He couldn't understand how someone could live this way, instead feeling a deep shame for writing such a poorly thought character. Just because his wife left him for another man in the upper realm, why does he wallow in self.pity and become some disgusting homeless bum? Could I not have made him grit his teeth and surpass them both? I was too naive and wanted Ethan to stick out more, but the story about finding his mother. Isn't it his father's story and not Ethan's? She was his wife before Ethan's mother. Amon thought to himself, an author's mind never stopped moving in considering how to improve himself, sometimes the comments were hurtful, but he still took their messages to heart, trying to get better. That's why his earliest work and its negatives were like a dagger to his heart. A weakness he didn't want to be revealed to anyone but Tia. He mapped the upstairs layout, two doors ahead of him and the bathroom to his right, for a slum house, it was quite nice, but then he remembered who wrote the story. It seemed the pirates who changed things didn't touch small things that he made, likely too lazy to put more effort in when it was for easy money. Amon was grateful as he reached the left door, he remembered writing the scene where Ethan met his father. Despite being the enemy of his MC Amon. The joy he felt when they reunited led to Ethan becoming more mature and learning more about his Azure Dragon technique. Sorry, I will cut that dream short. You are my enemy now. Creak. His left hand opened the door slowly, the leather glove squeaking from the cheap door that almost fell off its hinges despite him only using a touch of power. Damn. Scared the shit out of me. Inside the room was a state beyond anything Amon imagined, the scent of urine and body odor assaulting his nose, causing him to gag and almost vomit. It was that thick. Only someone who truly loved this man or had no sense of smell could stomach this place, the floor littered with bugs and bottles, his bed without a sheet and dirty stains. Ethan's father lay on the bed, snoring away with a dirty beard filled with food crumbs and matted together like his ginger hair. Amon's body used his blink.dragon step to hover over the ground, his veins and core strained to the limit before he reappeared over the man's body, dark violet eyes narrowed as the man slept peacefully. It was time for revenge. Gasp. What? What the hell? The man screamed as he sat up quickly, waking up from his nightmare about his wife having sex with another man, their looks of scorn causing him to feel defeated, like he was worthless. Then his son vanished and left for university and never contacted him. This was the last place he expected to see someone, especially a child floating in mid-air with his legs crossed and arms folded as if he were meditating. Amon didn't speak. Instead, his arm transformed into its dragon form, with black scales and sharp claws forming when Ethan's father blinked. The sharp claws penetrated his chest before the old man could even cycle his unused chi, blood spewing from his mouth. Guha. The man presumed him to be from that place because of the black flame, the family of men who took his wife. Gry.u.bastards. My s. Son. Will avenge. His voice stopped because he couldn't breathe as the hand of Amon seemed to be like some form of a black hole or gaping mouth that began to suck all the life and chi from his body, the intense pressure crushed his damaged core. The male's face and hair turned older, hair now gray and falling from his head, from a middle dot aged man to an 80 dot year dot old in a few seconds. Amon's eyes were glowing bright violet, the test worked. His cultivation was not the method Tia believed in. But something more gruesome and evil. However, it benefited all the women around him, their bodies, cultivation, and talents would be improved just by having sex with him even a small kiss would allow them to transfer chi and improve them both. But she wasn't wrong about me needing women to breathe through. Fuck. Ethan's father died easily while Amon pulled out his hand, the black dragon fire melting and destroying all evidence before it started a natural fire from the cigarettes in the ashtray beside his bed, falling onto the fabric-filled floor. Time to leave. Amon thought as his body vanished, reappearing in the opposite room his hand and eyes looking at the logs of his character profile. Kill the key character. Drained 1200 aura, 
Aura 2000 slash 2000, stored Aura 700, I knew it. The things I couldn't see without this profile were far too many. No wonder I need a woman to break through. My body cannot absorb the aura as it is. At least not yet. With this level of my black dragon's descent. But Ethan's father and all the secrets will burn. Amon didn't leave, even after the fire service came to put out the fire, his black flames destroying all cultivation resources. Even the secret diary of the Azure Dragon that his father had hidden under the third floorboard of the ground floor was no exception, burnt to cinders. And the ashes were blown with the wind. Sorry, I will not let you find that by some magical accident when grieving your father. Amon Welts is not kind to his enemies. Chapter 5252 An author's vice you are listening at novel full audio. After committing arson and leaving the scene, Amon spent nearly an hour roaming around, a slightly sour taste in his mouth. He was not a complete psychopath, so killing someone for the first time slightly affected his mind. Rather than saying he rejected it and it made him feel bad. Instead, he locked himself into a bloody path of no return. Despite getting rid of those annoying voices in his mind, the memories and things that happened were still in his head. And they were as if he did it or suffered it himself. To think that Amon Winchester never killed a single person over so many lives. Probably explains why he always felt so half-assed when I wrote him. Ha <laughs> ha. The only life I had taken until tonight was my own. Phew, I should return to the apartment since Elma will be busy with those two little tigers. The moment he began to pull out his phone to book an Ober Elite home, it vibrated, a number and name that caused his stomach to sink. 0127. M0M. I5. B3STBRR. She had called him twice already, with the tone constantly looping. He stood watching the phone, he was no longer Amon Winchester and his feelings towards her were no longer a mother and son but a writer and his first crush. Maribel Winchester was based on a woman he met as a student. They dated a few times and had sex for an entire weekend, and then she vanished. He wasn't sure why he created the character based on her looks, a youthful European face with brilliant blue eyes and soft blonde hair. In reality, her chest was a C.Cup at most, so in the fantasy of his novel, he made her an E. Cup because it was amusing and helped to change the bitter memories involving her. It's not like she was his first woman or first love, she was pretty much a glorified one. Night stand, but six months later, he saw her again at a meeting for his father's business, and she was pregnant. Soon to be wed to her fiance. This moment was when he just began writing and lacked experience, so the only way he could connect with the heroines and characters well was to link them to people in his past, and she just slipped into that slot. Amon Winchester's, adoptive mother, the husband of his adoptive father. At the time, it seemed fitting and suited his narrative. Ha! I regret my immature self. His mind now pictured her crying and begging him not to say anything holding the small girl in her arms with eyes that were the spitting image of his violent orbs and lovely black hair with a slight blue tint. Maribel was her real name, their daughter would never know he was the father. She offered money or anything he asked to keep the secret. This situation spilt into the first few drafts of the novel, and it showed with Rebecca's scenario and the situation with the messed up Winchester family. After that night, they continued to meet and have sex, he never knew what possessed him. Maybe he wanted to feel a sense of warmth, but the good times didn't last long. Once her husband discovered the truth, they moved to the city, and no matter how hard he tried, Amon could never find her again. Thus he kept her in the story, so he might never forget. Shortly after, his novel became more popular, with many readers commenting and enjoying or hating certain parts. It helped him forget his past sin, even using part of the donations towards searching not for Maribel but his daughter Lillian. During this period, he began chatting to a certain fan, at first, 
believing him to be a guy despite their display name having T underscore BL underscore lover as the tag with a profile picture of a busty girl with a cute face. Let's face it anyone is a man on the internet until you meet them in the flesh, that can still be true if you don't see them naked. If Amon's words stopped, he couldn't let his emotions from the last life change his current goal. This world wasn't gentle enough to let him survive if he let down his guard. Clack. He opened his phone, placing it to his ear, waiting for her voice to sound, but only silence and soft breathing entered his ear. Dot. A few moments she was passed before she snorted and finally spoke. How could you make your mother wait so long? I was so close to calling all your friends, Kazuna, Alice and Elma, to ensure you were okay. Amon looked at the starless sky clouds blocking his view of them while walking back towards where his car was parked earlier. Ah, uh, forgive me, mother. I was just a little busy. Busy. How weren't you with Elma? Busy making some cubs right. No. Mother, something came up, and I had to leave after a few rounds. A few rounds. Are you some kind of stud? Ah, uh, wanna try. The phone went dead, his eyes and mouth opening wide as he let down his guard listening to the strange response of his mother, who seemed just as baffled as he was. A daughter are you stupid. I am your mother. What a perverted and sick son I've raised. Despite sounding angry, there was a sense of jump and delight in her voice, sometimes, he wished that the traits of characters he wrote as a horny 18.year.old could have been wiped out before he died. Readers loved incest, but to earn or make money, you couldn't have that in your books, so Amon would make weird ways to make it possible so they would be happy. He wouldn't like that kind of thing because of losing his mother and suffering from an emotional detachment from the moment she left, but seeing the happy comments and those who loved it. Amon added them without thought, he felt nothing when mothers or death were mentioned, so why should it matter? Ah, that's right, she doesn't that I know we're not Rayal blood family. A shame, you're such a beautiful woman. Ugh. That. Thank you for the compliment, my dear son, it makes mother happy, but I called for a reason. There was a significant interest in your two recipes that you gave me, and the plant has begun to work on, and I don't have anything to do with it yet they contacted me. His mother's voice entered work mode, which made his heart a little lighter. This woman was the spitting image of the one that got away, and the black dragon technique increased his desires. And Amon wanted her to be his this time. Hmm, well, that's fair. Most of the time, it's not the youngling's work that earns praise, rather, they are following the elder's lead. Will you attend the meetings with the clients with me over the next few days? He felt something subtle had changed in the story because before he woke up, they hadn't even started production, and when did he show his mother the elixir? So it seemed not only did the story change when merging with his story about Elma, but time must have flowed differently. Maybe it was two months later. Or he acted two months sooner. Those were the details he needed to discover. Because if it was two months later. How far did Ethan grow since Amon crippled him, and has his torture of Rebecca started? I would love to, I will bring Kazuna and let Elma stay home. Oh. Not going to flaunt your little lover and introduce her to your mother. Alice is also my lover, though. He replied that he was not shy since she performed that oath, and he, the author who made that oath, knew the feelings and desire needed to perform it. So he would treasure this world, Alice. However, if he met the ones from other worlds. Maybe he might flay them alive. I see. No wonder. No wonder they are also on the list of interested parties and offered such a good deal. You mean the Murdoch family? Rather the Murdoch cultivating family. The martial arts branch rooted in the capital and controls most of the entire family's finances. His body finally reached his car, opened the vertical door, and slipped into the leather seat, pulling on his necktie to loosen it. Did you know Alice has been appointed the heiress of the martial arts branch because of her recent boost in talent and qualification? 
They said her blue phoenix bloodline and chi were more than 50% purity. Amon stopped moving, his hand brushing through his hair and nodding to himself. It seems his cultivation technique is not what is displayed, and he once again determined to practice with Elma and Alice to discover the effects for both men and women. The pair began talking for almost an hour before she finally gave a slight cough, and her voice became hoarse, so he told her to get a drink and call her in the morning. Clack. Sitting in the dark parking lot inside his red car, Amon began to reflect on his past, the sight of this car again reminding him about the cute girl that supported him after the incident with Maribel. This car is nice, something I always dreamed of driving. Damn, Tia and her rich family. As his mother began to go over the shortened details of the offers, Amon was partially listening and then remembering memories with Tia, her family. The Lovelia family were noble and existed for generations, but her mother and father were extremely down dot to dot earth and modern. After he signed a contract to have nothing to do with the succession and money of the family, of course. He can't forget that. He remembered speaking about the car in this novel and wanting to drive the car. It was based on a Ferrari Aventadora. So what did Tia do? That girl. With her little stubby fingers and plump ass bought me one. Driving it to my cheap apartment to surprise me. Stupid girl. Why was she so adorable? If it was her gift, a mere toy car version would have been fine. Chapter 5353 I hate cultivation novels you are listening at novelfull.audio. Amon didn't feel like returning to his lonely apartment with nobody else there. He already knew Alice was meeting distant family, which supported Maribel's information about the Marshall families being interested in the elixir now being created by his company. Bear. The red car arrived at a random bar downtown, this place was used by the normal populace and was rumored to be run by a hidden gang. Its name was, the Phoenix Lodge, turning off his engine, he parked the car and paid for the VIP spot via his phone. I love the technology of novels. So convenient. He whispered, leaving the car with his hands in both pockets. Amon looked a lot more wild and handsome with his shorter hair and the changes to his face making him more masculine and rugged. Quite a few people were walking the streets tonight as music and neon lights filled the western area of Shazong, quite away from Ming Shui's bar. Oh, that girl was very beautiful. The leader was the Scarlet Peony or something stupid. I liked the badass woman in cultivation novels back then. Yet they always get forgotten or have poor stories due to being frowned upon often. His steps were quite light in his black suit and loose white shirt, leaving his tie and jacket in the car looking more like a Lothario than a businessman. Luckily his face and background seemed well known as the bouncers looked at him with a scared face turning slightly pale before letting him pass. Ah! Why can that guy enter? One male shouted in the queue. Look at his face. It's like a movie star, then you. Ha! A dirty extra. Amon didn't care about the side characters bickering and entered the dark bar, tonight seemed to have a female singer and musician that would start soon. So the atmosphere was rather calm without dancing, but the tables and chairs were full of loud conversations and bragging filling his ears. Honestly, it's my first time in a bar. I feel a bit overwhelmed. Despite the memories of visiting them countless times, he found it difficult to act like those shameless young masters that order the large drink sets for thousands and act like they are special existences. Then they run away to tell their family when the protagonist beats them. So stupid. Amon didn't mean to pick this bar because he knew the novel's plot, and getting involved with Scarlet would irritate him as he knew her true personality. The Black Viper her title and nickname once the cultivation part of the novel started, she used not only Ethan but pitted several of the Marshall families against each other so she could get the fisherman profit and take the entire underworld under her control. That included her father's gang leading the entire north of the city. What can I get you, handsome? A cute girl asked from behind the bar, her smile was rather intoxicating. 
though nothing compared to Tia when she managed to cook a simple meal for the first time. Huh, why am I comparing everyone to her suddenly? That damned dwarf. Something strong doesn't matter about the price, I just want to forget. Ah, uh, mm, mm, I understand. Amon sat at the bar, his elbows on the counter as he listened to the music as the next act began to prepare. I don't know who the singer will be. Let's hope for no clichés. Thirty minutes later. The music stopped with the crowd gathering close to the center stage, this bar was a bit different from normal bars and would have live acts and music most nights, more akin to a pub than a bar with a DJ each night. Should I get a private room? Amon thought, feeling his own body becoming strange from the alcohol, cursing the fact that he wrote alcohol would even affect cultivators when they drink a strong spirit. His eyes were slightly glazed over, enjoying the taste of this sweet drink, but the kick caused the back of his throat to burn. Adios motherfucker huh? What a strange name for a cocktail. I remember trying it for my best friend's 21st a long time ago. Such a nostalgic taste of sweet and sour is perfectly blended in this world. Even the blue Kura.ao is to my liking. Phew. Another. The cute girl now looked less vibrant slight dark circles around her eyes as she worked tirelessly for the past 30 minutes and likely all night. Amon waved at her with a smile, shouting over the loud noise and people barking at the other bartenders. No rush, you take a break first, get yourself something to drink this time. He swiped his phone using the rest function, where a customer could pay for the bartender to take a short break and either take a bite to eat or join them. Normally used by the slimy guys to speak with the cute bartenders, but Amon told her to get refreshed and eat something. So she only earns around $11 an hour. So low. Let's get her 30 minutes to rest. Swiping again, that girl's eyes widened at first, seeming to think the worst, before he smiled again and waved to reassure her. No, no, make my drink, then you go take a rest. Have a drink or meal with me. You look like a zombie. He was forced to shout because of the noise, but the girl's face brightened when he told her why, and she nodded as she began to mix the drink. Leaning back against the bar, his hand holding the light blue cocktail with a cute little parasol, the main act for the night came to the stage. She had long orange hair, a strange pair of fluffy ears on the top of her head and a bushy orange tail with a white tip. Amon still hadn't fully adjusted to the demi-human story that was added to the normal story, so seeing a fox girl appear out of nowhere was shocking, her long black dress with what looked like diamonds glittering in the dim light drew his attention as he sipped on his drink. She quite pretty. He was going through his mind thinking back to both novels to make sure there were no more redheads that might be a damn heroine or female villain. Her face didn't seem to match the cute heroine from the second novel that he wrote about the beast men, as she was also a tiger, not a fox. I am just being paranoid right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight, her vibrant and sexy voice sounded, it was deeper and more sensual than Amon expected. This caused alarm bells to start ringing in his head. Something. Something isn't right. There was a certain hobby that the leader of the Scarlet Gang had which he wrote, but never this couldn't be her. Because the Hong Mei he envisioned was flat dot chested and had a huge scar over her chest. This fox girl had sizable melons that shook under her strapless dress with no scar on her body. Or the black snake tattoo that wrapped around her left arm. Will you please listen to my little songs, my cute little puppies dot. The songstress took a drag of her cigarette and blew the chi dot infused smoke into the sky. Thankfully Amon made sure to write that in this world, cigarettes weren't addictive or dangerous to heal, instead helping chi to amas and slowly repairing injuries. Now a harmless blueberry scent fills the musky bar. Somehow the males at the front were going crazy now, like some idol concert, as the woman gave a wry smile. H.O.N.G.May h.o.n.g.may. The men began to cheer while drinking their beers and cocktails, while the women looked a little displeased, but not for long as the moderately handsome fox boys holding the instruments came to the stage, 
throwing winks their way. Dot. I'm leaving. Amon felt he needed to leave, it was time to go. He heard the name they continued to chant, but he didn't need to deal with it now. This woman was beyond deadly and annoying to deal with. Is this the fate of being a novel villain or protagonist? Shit follows you everywhere. Suddenly the lights dimmed, and the crowd became quiet as the gentle piano and bass guitar timbre started to sound. The loud sound of the mic being taken from the stand buzzed before Amon noticed two people he didn't want to meet here. Ethan and one of his buddies called Ming Han, a distant relative of Ming Shui and someone who wanted to prove himself. If Ming Han is here, that is the real Hong Mei. The woman he pursues and kills due to her refusal later on. In the novel, he is one of Ethan's cultivation buddies, like those guys who show up every 100 chapters to get slapped, and then Ethan beats the young master who caused trouble. Before Amon could leave, suddenly, the spotlight focused on him. No dot no dot no dot and oh, there's supposed to be a side dot character villain here. What is happening? Hong Mei began to sing a moment later, her eyes watching his back. Fuck. Fuck you. What is this bullshit novel compulsion? A female's baritone voice sounded over the sound system as Amon turned around to stare daggers at her. It always had to be you ah, darlin, there was only ever you, in my heart dot. So please, help this little vixen's dreams, come true dot. Her little fox hands formed a heart shape as she winked, seemingly at the crowd and standing Amon. This bitch, his head turned to see Ming Han pointing towards him while Ethan sneered and whispered in his ear. As the crowd began to heat up and sang along to the catchy chorus, dancing along like Hong Mei's fox tails, so too was Ming Han's heart with enough jealousy enough to explode violently. Dot. Why is the novel's protagonist now acting like a petty side villain? Amon shook his head before turning back since the woman had used him for some reason, likely taking the place of side villain A. Then he wouldn't leave without some form of reimbursement and revenge. Little fox, you played with the wrong man, careful you don't get burned alive. But the largest thought in Amon's mind right now was. That he fucking hated cultivation novels. Chapter 5454 Sorry, I made your cousin a eunuch. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Hong Mei's view, atop the bar's second floor, the sweat songstress and her two handsome musicians sat on the leather seats before suddenly, like magic, the two handsome males vanished in a puff of smoke before Hong Mei grew two extra tails on her rear. Ah did you see those fools tonight, you? Hong Mei chirped in her seductive and cute voice while holding a glass of wine the girl beside her called you handed. This girl was not just a barmaid but was the one that served Amon, now wearing a black suit with a pistol holstered beside her mounds and knives in her long boots that extended to her knees. She was a cultivator of the bone-forging realm and had a small blonde fox tail fluttering from her ass. Ah, they were annoying tonight. So many guests wanted to get my details. Fufu my cute you air doesn't like those nasty men that are self-righteous and stink of arrogance. Hong Mei hugged the cute girl before she skipped around the room and saw something interesting with her eyes that glowed with a golden light. If Hong Yu was a hidden fighter, Hong Mei was a hidden expert. The golden light danced around her eyes as she watched an amusing event in the dark alley below. Say, what about that super handsome guy who kept getting that blue cocktail? Hong Mei asked with a curious voice. MMMM him. For the first time, Hong Yu didn't give an immediate denial or complaint, instead, she smiled before trying to hide it quickly, but the fox saw her face and nodded. To defend herself, Hong Yu continued. He was a pleasant man with a good scent, neither evil nor good and lacked any pretension he wanted to drink and not to get close to me or you. Rather, it felt like he wanted to avoid you. That's the feeling I got anyway. With her tail swaying, she called over Hong Yu with her hand with an amused smirk as she watched the drama. Interesting. Super handsome guy. Why do you want to avoid me? Despite being so strong at such a young age. 
Her tone was rather deep and husky but extremely sexy enough to say that all the males in the bear would bust a nut for her voice alone if she sang with her true voice. Hong Mei was oblivious, holding a sharp snake dot like dagger in her hands while resting her chin on the other, which leaned against the window ledge as she watched the group of men now in a conflict. Back to Amon, hold on. A disgruntled voice sounded, but it was neither Ethan nor Ming Han but one of his lackeys. Ah, great. Some free training. This suddenly feels like a true urban novel with these dumb young masters. But wasn't I the young master? What? Amon answered with his deep abrasive voice, stopping before turning around with a sharp glare at the group of me. You dare to covet the young master's woman, another one shouted with his bald head and wolf ears flickering. Annoying. He looked at Ethan and Ming Han in the background with smug faces, especially Ethan. Not that Amon would blame him. This guy was made into a eunuch and beaten three times by Amon. Not only that but his cultivation was also destroyed, forcing him to start again. Oh, he's back at the third stage of bone creation. Tempting to cripple him again as it's not recovered as fast as I imagined. Ming Han Amon's eyes traced over his body, the black flames bubbling in his eyes, able to sense the person's rough level of power. I see, Ming Han is at the second stage of bone forging. So that's where his confidence came from. Haha <laughs> well, whatever, I am not like the other Amon. Grow as much as you like, I'll crush you repeatedly. Because Ethan didn't exist in the original novel because he was dealt with in chapter 1, and the novel was a slice-of-life-slash-romance novel, not a cultivation-slash-action novel. Whoosh! Amon didn't care for all the sizing up and stupid chats that the protagonist and villains would do in urban and cultivation novels. Gya! Agaharg H. Help me! Amon vanished into thin air, and before they could even react. His fist had penetrated the bald man's chest before he opened his palm and burned the other lackey alive with black flames, not caring for the repercussions because his flames removed all traces of evidence. Quick. Get him. Fuck. Ethan shouted, his lips spitting drool like a moron as fear built in his heart. No matter how hard he trained, it was nothing compared to this man. He stole his girlfriend, ruined his business deal and destroyed his male function. Tap. Thud. Tap. Bang. Amon didn't care about anything, the fact they chased him like a common main character was enough to piss him off. Until. Defeated Bone Creation Cultivator gained 200 aura. Defeated Bone Creation Cultivator gained 200 aura. Defeated Bone Creation Cultivator gained 200 aura. Defeated Bone Forging Cultivator gained 1000 aura, aura. 2000 slash 2000, stored aura. 2300, when he realized that defeating them and crushing their cores would grant him so much aura, he stopped holding back, black flames began to emit from his fists, swirling around his body like a storm. Come on then. Let's fight. Back to Hong Mei's eyes, oh. He just broke that man in half. His balls must have exploded. Cheered Hong Mei with a vulgar laugh and tone. Beside her, Hong Yu didn't watch the violence, but her eyes were fixated on the beautiful movements of the strange man that ordered those drinks from her all night. His body danced like avoiding flames and blades, ducking, bending swaying before his fists would form deadly counterattacks. Sexy. You whispered, but the tails of May stopped swaying happily for a moment as her face narrowed with a twisted smile. As expected of sisters, we have similar tastes, Hong Mei thought to herself as she saw all of the lackeys that supported the fly that always forced himself into her events or bars and tried to make their relationship a fact. Go on, beat him. Don't worry, his family are just a bunch of snakes calling themselves dragons. Ming Han looked at his crippled men, some could no longer be called men after losing their male proof. Who the fuck are you? What are you doing to my boys? Don't you know who I am? Ming Han screeched, his body filled with a powerful aura of flames. However, 
it was an ordinary flame, nothing special. Hong Mei's eyes were like stars as she watched Amon just shrugging his shoulders before his entire right arm began to burn with a violent and evil black flame. Ah! I want to taste that flame. Will it make my demon fire stronger? Hmm. Are those snake scales? She asked when seeing the change in Ming Han's body, his face seemed slippery like a snake, and his hands became a black shade. Oh. So you're an eastern snake. Amon's words and Hong Mei's sounded simultaneous, causing her tails to thump down on the red couch she was kneeling on. Hong Yu also watched the two with a smile enjoying someone other than her sister abusing the annoying and slimy bastards from the Ming family. How dare you! We are the illustrious owners of the Eastern Black Dragon lineage. The Ming family. Amon didn't reply and looked at the changed Ming Han with a flat face, but the other seemed to think it was a display of fear and submission. Ha! <laughs> See you fucking ant, now bow down, beg for forgiveness and swear to become my little brother for the rest of your life, and I'll permit you to attack my men. The arrogant voice caused Hong Mei's ears to hurt as she looked at the male, wondering if he would succumb to the might of money and power. But he looks a little familiar. A moment passed by as Ming Han seemed to get impatient. Ha ha ha. Amon's handsome laughter echoed through the long, dark alley causing everyone to look at him strangely. The ones with Ming Han probably thought he went crazy with fear, while Hong Mei was curious because she felt a strange presence growing in that man's body. A presence that even she, a demonic fox, found terrifying. Ha. Amon let out a long sigh before tilting his head with a loud crack of his neck. So the little eastern snakes believe themselves to be real dragons now. It wasn't that he meant there were no eastern dragons, but Amon was the author and knew those things didn't exist for a long time, and there was only one on this planet. And she was his future woman, Ming Shui. Next time you call yourself an eastern dragon, say the same in the face of Ming Shui. Boom. The black flames around his body exploded, causing the ground to sink, forming a deep crater and the walls around him to shake and form cracks. Whoosh! Amon's arm swung down, now covered entirely with solid black dragon scales and a large set of claws, before his body rushed forward, catching the eastern snake off guard and landing a right hook into his stomach. Bang! The impact caused the entire alley to shake. A massive aftershock followed the shockwave as Ming Han's mouth began to vomit blood while rolling across the ground with his arms covering his face. Kneel and prostrate yourself. Ming Han. You are in the presence of the true black dragon lineage. Meanwhile, Hong Mei and you were squealing at the annoying guy beaten so easily, their tails now patting the red couch, looking identical as they watched Amon slowly approaching the kneeling Ming Han and the unconscious Ethan. Stop following those girls, they are under my wing. A A A A dot A ah, A. Ah. I promise. Never again. I won't. Ming Han stuttered, his face pressed against the ground as he watched Amon's dragon fist penetrate Ethan's abdomen with a loud crack. Once again, he was forced to reset his cultivation. Despite not being too bad today, Amon would never let this damn parasite live a good life in his world. Go back, tell Ming Shui that the Hong Gang is Amon Winchester's prey. The moment Ming Han stood up, a loud crack sounded once more, before the high dot pitched scream sounded. Yet another man was now a eunuch. Oh. He crushed his balls. Hong Mei cheered happily. Sister. Be less vulgar. Chapter 5555 Upgrade Heroin, Profiles You are listening at NovelFull.audio Defeated Bone Creation Cultivator gained 200 Aura Defeated Bone Forging Cultivator gained 1000 Aura, Aura 2000-2000, Stored Aura 6500 Amon watched with an amused smile at how Ming Shui would deal with this cousin she hates. Would this make her hostile to him? Probably not, but the possibility wasn't zero due to how annoying the Ming family elders were. 
especially those from the family's martial arts branch who look down on those who choose to keep living a normal life while practicing like Ming Shui's mother. Yet none of them would say anything because that wild MILF is in the phantasmal realm. So despite having enough aura to increase my cultivation by four realms, I cannot even increase once without having sex or dual cultivating. But somehow, it seems like I might not increase four realms. Maybe only three if the aura is shared. As he was fixing his suit, Amon realized that the alcohol slightly made him feel so pleasant and gave a bitter smile at his actions. Yet he did not regret anything, Ethan will start again from the lowest level even if he gets miraculous help that eats away at his luck, destiny, whatever crap the damn pirate added to the novel to make him so lucky. To think. In my version, he died after Amon took Alice back, so annoying. But he gave me full aura points. So crushing him is beneficial. Even a slither of meat is still tasty meat. Amon looked to the window that was now empty, only the red curtain that swayed from the movement of the two girls who were watching the scuffle. It seems that I also need to start looking into the changes in Hong Mei, how did a fucking black snake become a cute fox girl? I did say there would be changes, idiot. Oh, little dwarf. You're back, how was your afternoon nap? Dot. So, do you know why she changed? Humph, pretty Tia. Cute Tia. Tell me now. Dot. I should draw your naked body and then post it worldwide. You dare. Amon is an extremely talented body. Painting skills that are master level, ho ho ho. Maybe that time you offer. Stop. Stop. I'll tell you, don't show that. When he spoke to Tia, it felt like Amon could return to a moment of normal life, his mind not thinking about how to survive or who he should approach next. He felt like they were back in his small apartment while brainstorming, and she would veto all his lewd ideas, or when he asked her to pose for him for inspiration, she would act just like now, apart from one majestic time. Well, she was never a heroine in the original storyline. But after the change and the two worlds mixed, that is no longer true. So tonight, she was meant to become one of Amon's potential harem members. Who? That loser could handle the Black Viper. That's how it was meant to be. Amon's body began to move from the alley, although their bodies had vanished into less than ashes. Should Ming Han act like an intelligent martial artist like he was, he would bring one of the older members of his clan about now. This was giving him far too much credit, but Amon didn't like taking risks like that. As he was about to leave, Hong Yu looked out the window peeking from the side of the curtain like she was trying to avoid being spotted. Yo! Cute tail, Amon said, his feet standing on the window ledge of her room, looking down at her with a handsome smirk. Ah dot that dot h dot how. She stuttered before stepping back allowing Amon to get a nice look at her body as he nodded several times with a smile. Mmm, -hmm, nice girl, but I prefer Mimi let her know I'll be coming to play again soon. When he spoke, he looked at the door further into the room, able to feel the presence of the moody viper. Is this some test? I can never really grasp what character I gave Hong Mei. It was like someone ahem. With a fat ass and short height would often insist on editing her lines when I was sleeping. Oh your cocktails were really tasty, by the way. He said with a charming smile, poking her soft nose with his fingertip while she looked dazed and taking advantage of the cute little fox. Before you could even react, his body seemed to become missed and vanished, her body lunged out the window only to see his body vanish and appear several times, running along the distant rooftops before he left her sight. My ass isn't fat. You loved it when it was on your face. Dot. Dot. Look what you made me say. Humph, damn brute, molester, cheater. You're the one that liked to cosplay as her. Stop bringing out my dark history with such a handsome and smooth smile on your face. Ha ha ha. Zzzzzzt. The vertical door of his car opened before he flopped his body inside, since he arrived at the bar, his phone had been ringing all night, so he put it on silent. 
now opening the display and seeing the notifications, he felt a headache. 69 missed calls, 50 unread messages, they were all from one person, and after reading the first message, he realized it was nothing to worry about, or rather a smile came to his face. I came to your place my mother is being so stupid. Amon. Where are you? The house feels cold when you aren't around. Are you with that maid? I can do better, I will try my best. Because he managed to find a target to help break through the gift given by Ethan and his good friends. Why is she so cute now? Where is my cold-hearted and cruel CEO, Alice? So it was you. Ehehe I am cute. You cannot be mad. Ehehe fuck you. Anytime right here waiting, nice and wet. Dot. Amon slammed his hands against his steering wheel, suddenly, the world turned gray, and he felt life had lost all meaning, a heavy feeling in his heart as he turned on the radio station that played the saddest songs. Dot. I lost to Tia in a fight, my life is over. She changed my cute waifus into psychopaths. Has become a lewd little gremlin. When she was so pure and cute. Oi. You. I'll lose, okay. You win, see. I was wrong. They just needed a little nudge. Because I am your true waifu. So why have these women with their perfect bodies and pristine breasts? All because mine are a little too big and aren't perky. Dot. I'll forgive you if you tell me more about Hong Mei and why she now has a sister and became foxes. Bear. Like a revolving door, Amon's face was now normal without any sense of loss, and he had a smug smile because Tia would never win their fights, she was too kind and cute. Should I send it to your profile? Can you do that? Mm, I noticed I could view and contact people, but it's rather shallow. I can help them unlock skills they seem to have earned, and that's how I helped Alice and Rebecca in secret while you played with that cat maid. Maybe because I used to edit your novel before we died. The car was speeding down the road towards his apartment, but then the wheels began to spin as he almost swerved into a wall with both hands grasping the wheel tightly. We. Amon's voice sounded cool and calm, but his inner feeling and heart were racing. He was sure that Tia would contact him from their former world, maybe she thought it was just some dream because she only spoke at certain times. For some reason, despite him asking after she said the last words, Tia stopped replying before his character profile vibrated and showed a new tab, heroines. I am feeling a little sleepy, so let's speak tomorrow, Fufu, enjoy sleeping with that girl who is based on my body. You damn pervert. Enjoy the memory of your ex-girlfriend's welcoming body, but she doesn't have the mole on the inside of her ass cheeks. Dot. Her words must have taken back Tia after letting that slip because she didn't respond no matter what he mentioned from her dark past. As his car's engine boomed down the road, not caring for the sleeping residents, he shortly arrived at his apartment to see the lights in the training room were on. Strange. Why would she be in there, not resting in bed or watching television? To avoid her noticing, his body began to fade into the mist. He slowly swiped his key and began to approach the training room. Bang. Bang. Thud. He could hear the sound of her heavy breathing while the punch bags and pillars were being assaulted with a steady but powerful pace. Amon peeked into the room to see Alice's alluring but sweaty figure airing the skin-tight training outfit that absorbed most sweat and avoided chafing but was extremely lewd. Her kicks and punches showed the soft bump of her lower mound and the perfect curves of her humongous chest. Alice would assault the targets for two minutes without rest, then stop for thirty seconds before she continued. Strange. In the novel and past. Alice would never train alone. She hated fighting and those things in both my version and the pirated one. Amon watched her with fascinated eyes as he noticed how slowly her punches became more accurate and kicked more powerful, causing the black dragon and tiger inside him to start raging with the desire to attack and fight her. In more ways than one. If she wants to get stronger, let's help her. 
It suits me better if my woman is strong anyway. Whoosh. His body shot from the door, using his blink dot dragon step to reach her body before flicking out a sharp jab, intending to follow it with a powerful left hook. The fist tore through the air as Alice looked at him with a shocked face, before her fist wrapped in sharp ice and mirrored his jab with more speed but less power, the impact sending her body several steps backwards. Nevertheless, her guard remained as her tight hips twisted, avoiding his follow dot up hook, instead sending, using the momentum of her movement, her right leg shooting out like a jackhammer with a spinning back roundhouse towards his abdomen. Oh. Amon's knee lifted to check the blow, feeling the power of her leg, causing him to slide across the mats before she lowered her arms and blinked at him, a huge smile coming to her face as she dove into his chest and wrapped her arms around his neck. So cruel, master why did you attack me like this what if I hurt you? He gave a wry smile, placing his hands on her soft buttocks before lifting her to his hips and brushing his nose against hers. How could a little dwarf like you ever hurt me? Idiot, were you lonely? He asked before feeling her soft hands grasp his back tight, crushing her chest against his. Mmm. Since she performed the oath, he knew she couldn't betray him, but seeing her so cute made him feel a sense of nostalgia even more with Tia's last words. Holding her close to his chest, he whispered in her pink ear, sorry for being late. Before she could reply, he softly kissed her soft lips. Not caring about her sweat or messy hair, he carried her out of the training room and towards his bedroom. Ah, why are you so sweet to her? Just a little longer. And I'll be there. Wait for me too, Amon. Chapter 5656 A moment together, before the storm you are listening at novel full dot audio. Alice was carried to the bedroom but decided to take a shower first, while Amon went to the living room after changing out of his suit into something more casual. Heroin Profiles Another digital page appeared in his character profile display when he thought such a thing. There weren't many names listed in the document. He could only see two. Hong Mei and Alice Murdoch. Since it was simpler to see them first, he opened Alice as she was listed at the top with a gold border and couldn't be hidden. Probably due to the oath or Tia's bias because she's based on her. Alice Murdoch, age. 21 race. Half dot human, ice phoenix bloodline, cultivation level. Sixth stage. Body creation realm combat power. 8, base. 6 plus cultivation. 2. Cultivation technique Azure Phoenix Nether Tactics, mid-level. Stage 2. Combat technique Arctic Palm, mid-level. Stage 3 Blue Phoenix Flame. Stage 1. Movement technique Frost Feather Steps, high-level. Stage 1, Skills, Advanced Communications Intermediate Business Basic Driving Intermediate Sword Mastery, About Me a beautiful woman created in the image of a divine goddess with bright blue eyes and glossy azure hair, she normally looks on with a cold, piercing stare only to view a certain man with a gentle and affectionate gaze. She was once under the control of a strange influence suffering recurring nightmares, seeing a man that she sometimes loved, sometimes hated and usually enjoyed being around dying or being betrayed. The divine goddess tricked her into believing she had a system but forbade her from sleeping with the one man she had dreamt of for over ten years, otherwise, she would be killed. Unable to accept this, she took a risk and realized from the beginning that the feelings of affection towards him were never fake, no matter how many dreams she had. There were only two guaranteed scenarios. One, she would fall in love with Amon Winchester too, she would watch him die, then kill herself upon being released from the strange existence that could control her mind, body and thoughts. Due to oath, Alice cannot be affected by other novels and worlds, remembers all her past lives and even knows the current Amon is the man who created her and the feelings he felt when doing so, shit. This is a bit unfair, right? Amon was slightly startled to know that Alice knew everything, but he wondered when. He only slept with her because she was Tia. His consciousness was vague then, but her face and body and even how she acted, 
it was like Tia had returned to him. This shit is all messed up. What if the real Tia comes? Two Tias, dot honestly, he wouldn't mind that his heart skipped a beat and grew excited at that thought couldn't escape his thoughts. Amon. Are you all right? Alice's soft and concerned voice sounded as she entered the living room, her heels clacking on the ground. Hmm. Are you going somewhere? Ah. My mother called, it seems my sister woke up momentarily. Amon didn't listen to her words, his body moving before his mind as his arms lifted her, holding her tightly in his arms, spinning her around. Mm -hmm, Amon. I'm sorry. Her ice-blue eyes looked dim as she stroked his arms with her delicate fingers, wrapping her legs around his waist. 4. She tilted her head, leaning it against his arm before she spoke with a sweet and babbyish voice. I couldn't get my family to leave the company alone now they want some to get involved with your elixir production. Duff. Before she could continue, his arms held her tightly as he passionately kissed her lips, squishing her soft mouth against his. Her hands moved down to stroke his back, her thighs rubbing gently against his hips, causing her to moan softly. NNGMMMMPH, she muffled her moan of pleasure but moved her tongue in response, dancing with his as their lips touched and separated with her cheeks flushed and panting. He pulled away from her momentarily, looking deep into those gorgeous azure orbs, kissing each eyelash and nose until he finally found himself gazing into her eyes again. We can handle them. He said, brushing his thumb along her jawline as he lowered her ass onto the kitchen counter, keeping her close to his body. As soon as she sat on the surface, she wrapped her legs around his waist and leaned forward, placing her hands behind her neck and pulling him closer to kiss him. Who says I can't handle them? She purred, lightly moving her lips along his throat and biting his neck. I have you dot. Amon groaned as her teeth dug into his skin, slowly dragging across it before he turned his head and bit her earlobe, making her gasp. The sound made him smile and move his hand from her hip to cup her breast through the fabric of her dress. I do believe we are both capable of handling the situation. Amem. She nuzzled her head into his chest, wondering what had gotten into him recently, being so affectionate and gentle, but she didn't dislike it. It made her feel happy. I need to go, NMMPH. He kisses her, closing her lips with more force, his tongue invading her mouth, swiping around hers, and tasting her. It won't work. Dot if you say that dot again. Alice's nails raked down his back as he pressed her against the counter wall, her breast squashed against his chest as he kissed her lips, neck and face affectionately and seductively, she gasped as he pushed his thigh between her legs, rubbing against her with his muscular thigh sending a jolt of pleasure up her spine. She realized he wanted her. And it made her forget her mother's call, and now only his tongue, lips and face were on her mind. You're not leaving me. His lips were on her neck and collarbone, his hands gripping her ass tightly, his hardness pushing against her inner thigh. Amon. Amon. She moaned loudly as she felt his hard length rub against her, her breath catching in her lungs with excitement and her lower body was soaked because of his actions. If she were, to be honest, she had been on fire ever since he kissed her the moment they met, her body wanted to fuck him, to be ravished and left like the other day when she couldn't leave his bed for hours. I love you, Alice, dot. He growled into her neck, his lips pressing against her skin as he pulled her dress over her head, tossing it to the floor. I love you too, Amon. I don't love you because someone told me to. Or it's some memory I love you here. He said, kissing her neck. His fingers squeezed her soft buttocks as her little mouth let out a cute moan pressing herself against him and stroking his face with each kiss. You taste good, two dot. She giggled, her hair messy and wild. I know dot. He chuckled, his fingers tangling in a mess, his hands roaming her smooth thighs. His touch made her shiver and trembled as he lifted her from the counter, unbuttoning her skirt with one hand while he pulled it down with the other. Even her underwear was yanked down, causing her to breathe faster, it was so fierce and wild as his arms lifted and moved her like she was nothing. 
She couldn't help but loosen her shirt and jacket showing her cute cherries poking from her black bra that quickly snapped off and was thrown across the counter somewhere. I want you, Alice Dot. He whispered, his hot breath on her sensitive skin. Ah. Teasing my ass so roughly, what if I get a mark? She teased, her lips sucking on his neck, nibbling on the muscles that pressed against her tongue. I want you too I've been wet since you kissed me such a lewd man, what if I get addicted to sex with you? Amon smiled at her, leaning her body back to take a good look at her while she stared at him with affectionate blue eyes. You're so sexy, Alice. He said, removing his shirt and throwing it aside as he stepped out of his shoes, she began to hum a little tune watching him get naked for her, eyes glowing the moment his boxers were left with the bulge pushing them out as the tip greeted her. So sexy. I want it inside me. She muttered before answering his compliment. She would never have admitted it in the past, but the way he made her feel, either during their time flirting or having sex. Alice knew she was very sexy. Especially her tits and ass, as she made them jiggle, pushing her arms together to entice him with lewd, seductive eyes watching his cock that began to throb in his pants. I know. She smiled, looking up at him as he removed his pants. Let me make you feel good, beautiful. She grinned as he sat her down on the counter, her back pressed against it as he stood in front of her with both hands on her parted thighs. Her business skirt was removed, and only her naked body was displayed, with the sticky, wet blue hairs covering the top of her mound. Before we start, I am a dual cultivator. So if you suddenly break through or start to reach the limit. Don't panic, and it's a master dot level technique so that you won't have issues with your foundation. MMM even if I did, for you, I'd become your cauldron among the man who created me. And the man who helped free me from that hell of a repeating world. She whispered, leaning back, putting both her feet on the counter to spread apart her lower body into a wide M shape. Her puffy mound was now spread apart with sticky silver threads dangling from the soft petals and small puckering hole. Amon let's cultivate until I cannot walk. Chapter 5757 My cute cauldron, 1, you are listening at novel full dot audio. He couldn't help but feel aroused by those words, his clothes already on the floor, but before he fucked her, he wanted to taste her while sober, Amon Welts loved oral sex, but fighting to keep control of the spirits was annoying. Now he was free, he wanted to make this cute girl squirt until she begged for his cock. His eyes moved over her body. He liked her firm and perky breasts, like little orange dot peel spheres. Her nipples were hard and peaked from the heat of their passion. They looked like they would be fun to suckle on. Dot the pink folds of her lips were split open by her engorged clitoris, which was now swollen like a tiny purple plum. His mouth watered at the thought of sucking on it. Mmm. His hands rested on her thighs before leaning down while keeping his eyes fixated on her, his mouth opening and extending his tongue towards her wet, waiting pussy. The hot air around them seemed to ignite as he put his tongue out, licking up all the juices dribbling from her entrance, now smeared all along the soft pink petals he was so used to. Ooh. She moaned subtly as she felt him nuzzling between her outer labia. Ah. Oh, Amon. He licked all over her, careful not to touch her clit or get too close to it. He didn't want her to come yet, he wanted to make her cry out for more when she could no longer take it. As he kept doing that, he rubbed the backs of his fingers against her tight asshole while sliding his index finger up along her cunt. She had an exquisite flavor, sweet and tangy, salty with a hint of cinnamon. In reality, Tia's pussy was not quite as tasty, but the scent of her body was like a drug to him, that's why her scent was slightly sour with a hint of sweet almonds. Ah it tastes different from Tia. This is Alice's taste alone. Mmm, you keep avoiding my clit. No. Nnn, your finger is playing with my insides. Don't tease my G. Spot. She tried to push herself backwards away from him, but he held on to her hips and prevented her from moving. He didn't want her to escape, nor did he want her to stop. It wouldn't serve the purpose of this little game. 
Mm, Amon, please. He ignored her pleas to see how long she could hold out. He knew she was sensitive about her clit, but other body parts were just as delicate and wonderful. Such a perfect body, but I am glad I made Alice slightly different. The part where her thighs and pelvis joined, for example, he didn't know if it was just Tia, but when he kissed her thighs, slowly licking along them towards her pussy she would become extremely excited and moan like he was fucking her ass. But if he did it to Alice, she would only shiver slightly and grow silent as her breathing became shallow. Ah. Amon dot. It was so frustrating. He left her pussy and kissed up her stomach, leaving a trail of saliva as he went. After a few moments, he reached her chest, kissing her neck, before going further up, kissing her collarbone and then her shoulders. When he reached the curve of her shoulder, he slid his hand over her chest and began to tease her large nipples with both hands, pulling and twisting them as her hips began to push against his pelvis, the warm sticky goo from her dirty cunt dribbling along his shaft that poked against her toned stomach. Yet he ignored her desperate face, instead running his fingers over her skin. He loved her smooth skin, it was always so soft and cool. He could feel the heat rising from her body, making running his fingers over her even more pleasant. Another difference your skin is so cool and nice. My cute Alice. Amon, I think she's almost there. He knew she was getting close because he could hear her whimpering, muffled through the white silk. He ran his fingers down across her stomach again, reaching her pubic hair growing thicker and coarser around the top, soft and blue with a cute and erotic look. Beg me, and I'll make you come. He whispered in her ear, biting on the tips and causing her to shudder, her hips grinding against him as if to get herself off from rubbing against his hard glands. Her legs and feet tensed, and her hands clenched into fists, all her muscles starting to strain beneath the surface. Tilting his head and looking down at her, he smiled while running his fingers over her furry mound. What will you do for me, little Alice? She swallowed hard, biting back her anger and frustration because even his teasing was getting her off. Ah, I am so glad I made you different from Tia. My cute Alice, you are finally mine forever, in body, mind and soul. You have a choice. Beg me, or take what I give you, he whispered, kissing down her stomach. Then he reached between her thighs, teasing her clit and pinching it lightly with two fingers, pressing on the sensitive nub and making it grow large. She grunted in frustration, trying to grind herself harder against his hardness, but Amon lifted her legs and pulled them back towards his chest to prevent her from moving. So close. But Amon ignored the signs of impending climax, not wanting to lose this chance. Not when he had a chance to get her to submit so easily. NNN. I can't take it anymore. Please, Amon. He smiled. She knows what I want. And without further hesitation, Amon placed his lips on her warm, sticky clitoris, his tongue parting her swollen folds before licking along her clit. His mouth was like silk over her most sensitive flesh, and as he licked, his fingers moved down and began to tease her entrance and asshole again. Alice squirmed and squealed beneath him, moaning as she tried desperately to push herself away. Her pussy grew hot, wet and juicy around his fingers, her clit throbbing in response to his tongue. NNNN, MMMH. She was close to orgasm, very close, but Amon didn't stop until his face was buried between her thighs, the cool air brushing across his cheeks and lips. A. Amon, A. Mon. Her taste was salty and sweet at once. And when she came, her juices drenched his mouth, and he swallowed them all without missing a single drop, sucking on her clit until he felt it throb against his tongue. It was too much for Alice, her entire body tensed, her legs pressing tighter against his face, and her hands clenching into fists as her hips pushed forward, trying to rub against him, desperate to come. Amon. She came, her muscles contracting and shaking so violently it was almost painful, her cunt pulsating around his fingers in violent spasms that seemed never dot ending before slowly fading away. She slumped over his shoulder and collapsed, limp in his arms, her breast still covered by her white dress, 
her stomach sticky with her gooey fluids dripping down his hard shaft from her arousal. But he wasn't finished yet. He let her fall backwards to lie flat on the counter, her legs dangling over one side and her arms still above her head. Then he licked his lips, staring at her as if he hadn't just had sex. That's it. I've got her. He kissed down her belly again, stopping at her slit again. She twitched in anticipation, wanting him to return. But he ignored her, instead began to massage her body, teasing her nipples and pinching her soft flesh between his fingertips. It made her shiver and squirm beneath him, unable to move. Mm -mm -mm. Alice moaned, shifting in pleasure and frustration. Amon smiled down at her. I'll have you begging for more. He breathed in her ear. Then he pulled his fingers away, sliding two down to tease her soft gooey entrance and pink asshole while rubbing his thumb over her clitoris. Alice moaned, her ass spreading against his finger as she shifted to allow him better access to both places. She couldn't help but shiver from the sensation of Amon's digits rubbing all over her, spreading her juices and her spit over her sensitive flesh until it felt like she was on fire. Then he leaned in towards her, kissing her inner thighs. Alice jerked from the sudden assault on her senses, her entire body burning with anticipation as he began to kiss up and down her legs. His mouth was hot against her skin, the taste of her sweat and desire mingled together. Her thighs grew damp as she begged him to touch more, and her toes curled into the carpet. When she thought she couldn't take any more, his lips stopped on her outer labia and began to suckle her clit again. She arched her hips, moaning loudly as she felt his fingers enter her hole. It was strange, having him tease both her ass and pussy at the same time, the pleasure far beyond what she felt during their first and second times. It felt like he was more relaxed. Taking his time to slowly unwind her, to make her body tender like a sponge to absorb pleasure and his seed. He licked her again, and his fingers sank deeper inside her while his mouth sucked on her clit, sending Alice spiraling out of control. She thrashed and groaned as she came once again. M.MMGH. Alice was close to exhaustion. She could no longer stand and merely flopped on the countertop, her head between her knees, her thighs wide and trembling with want. Amon let her relax, his fingers exploring her most intimate parts before slowly pulling out with a wet, slimy pop. Before licking his fingers and face clean with his tongue while looking down at the cute Alice, no resistance, no tsundra, simply offering her body as her little asshole and entrance were throbbing visibly. Come on, this is our first true dual cultivation together. I won't let you do it on the hard kitchen counter. He said softly, lifting the tired and spent Alice into his arms, letting her lean against him. His lips gently kissed her sweaty forehead as they approached the master bedroom. Alice nodded, her entire body feeling too weak to speak. She was so drenched from being teased and having Amon eat her out that she thought her clothes would be ruined. Amon lowered her onto the bed, setting her carefully in the center, letting her sink back and feel at peace. He crawled in after, his big form taking up the space between her legs, spreading them further. His legs sprawled out to either side, his cock rising proudly as he looked down at her looking incredibly satisfied with himself. Amon Hihi, you're so gentle this time. I might die from happiness. What kind of cauldron is happy? Fufu I know you love me too, Hihi. Her dreamy eyes looked at him, reaching out to his body as he leaned down to meet her with a gentle kiss, their lips smacking briefly as their bodies began to entangle. I'm going to start, Alice. Mmm, be rough make me feel good. I'll make you strong so that no one can bully you but me, my cute little Alice. Nn. Closing her eyes and biting her lower lip, she waited for the sweet and strange feeling of him entering her, both hands wrapped around his back, with her heart racing. This moment felt more like her first time with Amon than in the past for Alice. It was the first time after giving him her oath and learning his true identity. That's why for her the feeling of his member slowly pushing apart her narrow entrance, the slight aching throb as her insides began to expand, was all the more special to her. 
As she looked up, his violet eyes made her feel at ease. Even the blue phoenix in her body no longer resisted and began to sing a song of mating and courtship. Chapter 58, Bonus, 58 My cute cauldron, 2, R18, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Closing her eyes and biting her lower lip, she waited for the sweet and strange feeling of him entering her, both hands wrapped around his back, with her heart racing. Amon's hands wrapped around her hips, slowly pushing his hips, enjoying the warm, slippery sensation of her entrance as his cock was pushed back. Her soft folds resisted the invader momentarily before his glands pushed through, expanding her flooded tunnel to his size. She moved further inside, feeling her clamping down on him with her pulsating, sticky walls. Mmm, -mm, it's big. And tingles. He pulled out for a moment, letting his glands rest in the small puddle of her honey. His fingers gripping her hips tightly, he pushed into her again, filling her, their bodies aligning perfectly with the same pace. She loved it, moaning while her whole body was shaking with each thrust, their bodies pressing together until they were in sync, Amon's rhythm matching hers exactly. Inside his abdomen, the black fire and ice began to form small beads of pure QI, slowly moving down towards his lower body, traveling along his cock into the depths of Alice's vagina, mixing with her QI and womb, flooding her body with a huge amount of aura. At the same time, her mouth opened wide, her body arching, reaching climax from the feeling of his excess aura flooding her womb, the poor blue phoenix in her abdomen now assaulted by the QI of two beasts making her surge with excitement and power. Amon could feel the aura from Alice entering him, the blue phoenix trying its best desperately to absorb the aura from his two beasts while her body was ravished by his cock, pushing against her womb with each violent thrust. too much. He felt her push herself to him as he pulled back, pushing in harder, opening up her inner walls to let more of him enter her. The QI poured out of her, coating his cock and making him throb as her wetness soaked his flesh with her natural lubrication. Her head rested on his shoulder, and her legs wrapped around his waist, their eyes connecting when he looked deep into hers. Amon smiled at her, squeezing her hips firmly in his hands. Do you like it? Her eyes still connected with his, she nodded, moving her body back until they were in sync again, their bodies entwined as her pace increased to meet his. Their breathing matched as they moved, his weight holding her up from the bed, his thick cock invading her depths, their bodies rubbing together. Oh. Oh. So good. Amon. I'm coming. Oh. She was right there, her body clenching around his shaft, her insides contracting from his invasion, her mind blanking from pleasure. He felt his orgasm building up, and he couldn't hold back anymore, the pressure burning inside, the need to release becoming too great, an unstoppable force that had no choice but to explode. Alice's back arched as well, her body tensing under him, her toes curling as she came on top of him, and Amon seed spewed into her womb, filling her body with his essence while her thighs clamped around his waist. Crying loudly, her voice echoing in his ears, he buried himself inside her one last time while firing huge amounts of energy into her womb, filling her with his power. When his climax subsided, Amon's body shivered, yet his cock didn't shrink, Alice collapsed on top of him, her legs spread out, her face buried in his neck, her arms wrapping around his shoulders, her chest pressed against his muscular chest, her heavy breaths filling his ears. He felt her giggle as they came down from their high. Did you think that would be enough? Both could feel the powerful energy circling in their bodies, as her pussy expelled part of his sperm, oozing down her thigh, she felt him throbbing inside her. His QI was still pouring into her, causing her to feel amazing pleasure and ease. While hers slowly flooded into him through his cock, as the chi cycled through their bodies, it left a small amount in the other person's body while moving faster around the veins. Mmm. I feel so full of your bubbly hot cum will you give me more? Amon he he dot. Yes. Yes. I'll make sure to fill you up whenever you want, Alice, he said softly, kissing her forehead lightly. 
Alice began to lift rapidly and slam her hips against him as they sat in a pseudo-lotus position, she could feel her breakthrough was close, and now she understood what he meant about dual cultivating. Her tutor said she might take half a year to break through. Yet his sperm and chi. Only a few moments, and she could breathe through, and that was only a small portion of the love he was giving her. Yes, the dream girl began calling his chi and cultivating aura love. Kiss me while you pound my slutty CEO cunt. She demanded hotly. Amon leaned forward, pressing his lips against hers, their tongues tangled together, passionately exploring each other's mouths. With his hand on her hip and his other arm wrapped around her waist, he continued to slam his cock into her, their bodies slapping together, the bed shaking with every brutal thrust. Ah. Yes. So fucking hard. Mess me up make me feel your every vein and bump. Alice cried out as her insides began to tighten around his cock, squeezing and releasing like trying to milk all the chi and sperm from his balls. Come for me, Alice, he whispered hotly into her ear, his head leaning down as he kissed her neck. Alice gasped, her back arching, her head resting against the pillows as she came, her entire body tensing under him as they both fell forward, now in a strange missionary position. NNN.MMM. It's sensitive don't fuck me so hard. HAA. Then why are you pulling me deeper, you little seductive bird? Her legs wrapped around his waist, pulling him deeper into her as he filled her to the brim with his seed, their bodies trembling together, riding out their orgasms. I don't want to let you go the thickness, the heat. And how hard it is when you slam against my womb's interior. Ah. So good. Keep moving. Treat me rough. Love me. Dot once she had calmed down, Alice started to move again, rocking her hips back and forth, causing him to pull out and push in, continuing their lovemaking while she trembled. Aya. I'm coming again. Your cock is so good MMPH. She cried out as she came, her body tensing underneath him. The squishy sound of her fluids splashing onto the sheets mixed with the wet smacking of their bodies as they moved together, making quite the mess, her arousal dripping off his cock and pooling on the bed. Amon reached his second orgasm as well, emptying himself into her womb once again, stuffing her with even more semen while her body convulsed below him, crying out in pleasure. He flopped on top of her, panting as he felt his body begin to change, the pleasure and lust that was spent instantly increased tenfold, his cock shrinking inside her returned to a full erection, pushing her insides from a strange angle, leaving her whole to remain plugged with his cream. Their bodies began to glow faintly as her core absorbed his body's huge amounts of aura. At the same time, he did the same, both of them kissing passionately as the pain and cramps from their breakthrough began to plague them, Amon started to shake his hips, as it alleviated most of the aching pain. Ah, MMPPGH keep going it hurts less when you pound me. He took the cue, slamming his hips into her, using the extra room they had created with their cultivation technique, pumping his cock into her depths hard. Yes. Just like that. Give me all of it I'm going to come again. Alice came for the third time in the middle of their lovemaking, her body shaking, her vision blurry from the waves of pleasure. She knew that her teacher lied when he said the pain of a breakthrough couldn't be removed. Her body now only felt the blissful pleasure of dual cultivation. While her entire body was reaching a second breakthrough just from her boyfriend and fiancé's devoted love. A long time later on. They lay side by side, watching the sunrise as the birds chirping outside the window. Amon sighed contently, leaning against the soft pillows. I should have known something was wrong when you weren't yourself. You kept dodging my questions, acting strange. Invited me here. Yeah. I was very nervous because I wasn't sure if it was you. Or the normal bastard Amon. Currently, the two were filled with a layer of dirt on their skin, but their bodies were filled with tight, firm muscles and eyes filled to the brim with energy, his cock still plugged her insides, but they were just laying together stroking each other's face and talking about the past and why Alice suddenly slept with him. I still can't believe you, what if the system was real? 
wouldn't you have died? Amon laughed, kissing her small nose gently. It's not my fault. When she entered me, I saw images. Of a handsome man always drawing. Writing and then a woman that looked just like me but with black hair. Amon chuckled, his new power was great. All of the aura spent, and he discovered that his cultivation technique was very beneficial to his women and himself. I am glad it's not some brutal cauldron technique. Let's hope the profile can have an updated description. Otherwise, people will misunderstand. Well, I guess we'll never know, right? Alice agreed, smiling up at him. No, we won't. But I'm glad I finally have you. Me too. He replied, kissing her tenderly and pulling her closer to him. She giggled, returning the kiss happily. We should try to sleep, it's already morning, and I'm sure the maid will be shocked to clean the room. So much dried and wet come all over the bed and floor. You should have swallowed dot. Ha. Hey. You almost drowned me. Bastard. On. She bit his lips before sucking on them, releasing him with pop and humph. He nodded, kissing her cheek lovingly before closing his eyes. Alice closed her eyes as well, falling asleep almost immediately. As she fell asleep, she could hear the system notifications. Amon Winchester's current affection for Alice Murdoch. 0.001%, the moment she was about to jump out of bed and scream. Amon Welts's current affection for Alice Murdoch. 101%, even in a coma, Tia couldn't turn down the chance to tease Alice. Chapter 5959 Minx Shwe's concern you are listening at novelfull.audio The pair spent a long evening enraptured by each other, so much it felt hard to tell where one ended, and the other started as they continued to comfort, bond and love each other way into the morning as the sun's rays shone through the sunroof window. Mmm. Nnnnnn. Amon moved only to find her little face buried in his chest, her arms holding him with more power than last night, while her face, despite being a little dirty, was extremely beautiful, just like her body. It was like she had been to a cosmetic surgeon overnight while he slept. Did you have fun? It was good. Fufu with a girl who was modeled after me. Alice is Alice, you are you. Before she could moan or complain, he continued his thoughts while both hands stroked along the back of Alice, who began to stir in his chest. Her lips kissed his body, not caring about the impurities. You are both special in your ways. And I would never compare you to anyone else, so don't try to compare Alice with yourself. Likely because she was too happy as he saw the massive smile across her face. Humph I bet my body feels better. Well, come and get in my bed, and I will taste you and let you know. Dot. Really. Ah. I'm waiting. Soon. I promise. Amon had already begun to realize something but didn't want to speak out in case he was wrong, only if it were true his heart was filled with anticipation and delight for the future. He didn't want to, but because there was too little time now, he started to get up, his hands caressing and teasing Alice to make her stop being a little sloth. Alice, it's morning. Let's get up. Mmm, but my legs and abdomen are so sore. Let me sleep for a year. Okay. It wasn't like he could blame her, the moment she started to break through to the next realm, her insides became extremely tight and started squeezing erratically, which turned him one, thus, instead of letting her break through in peace. Alice was like a ragdoll thrown between a rock and a hard place. Amon's hand began to stroke her abdomen gently, filled with firm muscles and smooth skin, his black chi slowly pouring into her muscles and body to help alleviate the muscle damage and bruising. Nnnnn, don't cheat, let me sleep, Alice whimpered from the pleasant tickling of his chi entering her sensitive areas. Let's go take a bath and clean off the nasty impurities that are all dried up. Amon nudged her cheek with his chin, but the little phoenix was well and truly down. Her eyes were droopy, with heavy eyelids, and it wasn't just laziness, her body felt like it was in a war with a bear for several days without rest. 
she's probably done for. Why don't you toss her in the bath and watch her flail? Lazy fat ass bitch. Jealousy is not the best color, Tia. Yet he listened to her, lifting the spoiled princess maid, who was supposed to attend to him in a princess carry and walked towards the end suite bathroom with the large, intimate bath and filled it to medium dot high heat and filled it with medical powder and bubbles. Amon tried to awaken her several times while washing her body with a damp cloth to remove most of the nasty impurities, but the girl was like a koala clinging to him. This is identical to Tia. She would do this all the time when we worked hard to have a child or had a deadline and stayed up all night. Mmm -mm so comfy. Maybe that's why Tia was quiet as he performed the same actions he would have back in the real world but this time without the limitations of the small bathroom. Slowly, he lowered himself into the water, keeping her in his arms and using his lap as a seat for her to submerge into the bath comfortably. Warm taking a bath is so good, wash me more, it feels tickly and nice. But not there. I will get horny again, so let me do that. Here is different. The sloth back home would make me do everything. Dot. He knew she remained silent due to nostalgia, and he acted this way to provoke her rather than hoping it would make her come to him sooner. His small theory meant she couldn't come here in the short term, and he would have to go to the Murdoch family home to meet her instead. However, Amon would continue to play stupid, out of fear that it was just his wishful thinking or something more sinister was at play. The pair bathed for over an hour once the medical powder in his chi softened up her muscles and sore nerves, helping alleviate most of her pain except the swollen, puffy mound which needed at least a day to recover from the ferocious night of sex. Alice was now wrapping her body with a towel with a beautiful smile on her face, blue hair tied up in a high ponytail still dripping with candy-scented water while her azure eyes looked at Amon, drying his hair, still naked with perverted eyes. Today, I have some business to attend to, how about you? Amon said while brushing his teeth and moisturizing his skin. Mm, -mm I need to head to my mom's and find out more about who is going to disturb your company, once I have some detailed information I'll send it to you, okay? Her voice was serious as she started to get dressed in the spare clothes she left last time, her soft creamy legs now covered in a black pencil skirt and stockings, but she only had a regular red shirt with a high collar for her upper body. You look great, but it makes me want to tease you again, Amon whispered as his hands slid along her hips, causing Alice to grin victoriously. MMM impossible I've already booked an Uber to go home. I could have given you a lift, though. Amon you are so busy, and if we stay together we'll end up fucking like rabbits again. Alice pouted, kissing his lips softly with a loud smack, her eyes only leaving him once her phone began to vibrate. It's here moi. Come see me soon text me. Amon watched her leave with a little skip in her step, her cute face looking back several times to blow him a kiss or wave before she left the door. He looked down from the balcony, his phone vibrating, but he ignored it until he saw her safely enter the Auburn drive towards the Murdoch residence. Good, she's more like Alice should be now. Well, you did pump her with enough seed to fill a car's fuel tank, so vulgar. Answer the phone. I will. Clack. The moment he opened the call he wished he checked the name because as soon as he answered. What did you do to my cousin? Ming Han has all the family in an uprising to crush your company or demand more shares. Oh. Is that what the little bitch is planning to do after I crushed his balls, dot. Amon was too relaxed and replied as he would to Tia or Alice, yet it was already done, so there was no need to pretend for Ming Shui, a character he loved and wanted to make his. The desire of the old Amon to make her accept him wasn't the novel Amon's feelings or desire, but Amon Welts, as the author made this character out of his tastes, and thus, thanks to that, he could take control easier whenever in scenes with Ming Shui or Elma. Eh. I know he's a little annoying but. Isn't bitch too far. He attacked me with the Ming family goons because a girl gave me a favorable look. Dot. So. Why does it sound so convincing just hearing you say that? But I am worried. About me. Ah, 
I feel honored for the beautiful Ming Shui to be worried for me, shall we grab dinner to soothe your fears? Ha dot hu. Ming Shui stumbled on her words, taking a few moments to breathe deeply. Who worried about you? I am worried about our company and deal. If they get involved, won't they take more of my... Our money. Amon smiled at the subtle changes in the character he created, somehow, this wasn't the same as what he read in either version of the novel and proved his approach would one day pay off. Who did you base her on? Why? So I can find and kill them. Why are you so violent? Humph. You treat the character based on me so rough, fucking her ass on the first meeting, yet treat this pretentious witch like a princess. I'm pretty sure it was Alice begging for it in the ass though, pedantics. Hurry, fuck her too. Be nasty and make her cry, dot. Dot. Amon. Are you there? Ming Shui asked with a soft voice of concern. Ah, you don't need to worry. The only person from the Ming family I will deal with is you, even if they replace you. Come to my side and we'll work on it together. Eh. Is that a proposal? Hmm, maybe. Business or private? She asked, seeming more relaxed and with a strange, seductive tone. Mostly business, and then when you fall for me, private. The phone was quiet for a few minutes before the soft laughter of Ming Shui began to sound, it was gentle, like the ringing of bells. Ha 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 really. Even without my family's money, power and fame. Amon didn't even take a moment to consider and answered with a resolute yes. Ming Shui's voice made a little sound before she giggled again, this time more of a nasal sound before she seemed to whisper. Okay. Let me think about it, and we'll make a new contract Fufu. I felt so bad today, but Amon, you're always so amusing. Beep. 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 Then before he could reply, the phone went dead. That girl. She's changing in a way I can't use the novel to capture her anymore. So. Annoying. Amusing and fun. Tisk, bastard. Give me back my virginity. So I can take it again. Dot. Amon's smile instantly faded when he thought of the Ming family. I will have to fight and kill so many of those idiots before they listen. Ha. Maybe I should get someone to attack them. Another Marshall family might be good. The Hong family or maybe the Chin family. No that family is a parody of novel MCs so what if they became real MCs in this world? Fuck my dumb ideas. Chapter 6060 Changes you are listening at novel full dot audio. Amon was originally going to see Ming Shui, but he put that on the backrest due to her shitstain of a cousin and his trouble causing. Berar to Berar. Mother. He still felt a little strange calling her mother when she was modeled after a woman he never forgot, that single weekend of sex was always ingrained in his mind. Why did I make them so alike? Did I plan to have myself a cameo as his dad? So stupid. You are just trying to explain why you will bang your mother. There's no blood, not a crime. Deny it motherfucker. I can't change who I am if you come to kiss me this instant, I'll stop. You have ten seconds. You bastard. I can't move right now. Fuck you. Why do I love a clown like you? Stupid. Humph. Probably the sex. Shut up. Click. I was a virgin until you made me so perverted. My poor father would die if he knew what I have done with you. You still reached climax from those things. Disgusting dwarf pervert. Dot. My dwarf pervert. Dot. Hello, mother, what's the matter? He answered the phone calmly because he didn't know how to speak to her. When he first transmigrated, the time he spoke in the past ed was easier because he didn't have all his memories. Knowing who she was based on left a sour and tempting taste in his mouth. Fufu my son, why so formal? 
Your mother just missed your sexy voice tell me, when will you come to see me? Now, if you want. Eh. Really. But my makeup and clothes. Mother, you are always beautiful, even wearing a trash bag. Fufu what do you want from your mother? I can give you pocket money. But you earn more from your business now, right? Then how about you spend the day with me and have a date? Mother and son. On a date. Yeah why not? We're both beautiful, so stupid people will be jealous of mom's cute face. Are you going to seduce your mother? Rather than some disgusting bastard taking her away. Mother Khan. Hey. I didn't have one in real life. Ease off. TSK how about you get me pregnant and call me mommy while sucking milk from my tits. Dream on. Humph, okay then give me some time, and don't drive your red car. Bring the black one that looks smart. The executive. Ah, uh, okay, no problem. I'll give you an hour to get ready. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, do you need help dealing with those pesky families all wanting to take a slice of your business? Mother can wipe them out if you want. No my cute and pretty mother should relax and let her son do the hard work, give me a reward if I manage to do well alone. Oh, a reward. Fufu whatever could you want from me. I will send her a letter with the truth. I will shave off your hair. Dot. My pubic hair. But I only keep that for you. Idiot. Dot. Amon. Because he took too long to reply, his mother seemed to worry, so Amon was forced to laugh before replying to her gently. A date with mother is best. That again. An old lady like your mother, what about those cute girls? You're prettier than them. Dot. Dot. R. Dot really. Mmm, the mother is pretty, like a 21. Dot year. Dot old. Oh, you. Dot vomiting sounds. Dot. Just push her down and fuck her. Why are you so cringe? Fuck you. Anytime. Ah. I'm tired. Let me die. W. Well, I'll get ready, and we can go for a coffee and something to eat for lunch. Maybe call Kazuna and have her drive you. She seemed a little frustrated because you never contact her and only get help from Elma. Ah, uh, okay, mother. I'll call her now. Mmm, -hmm, good. She's a good girl, just a little stiff and has seen the bad side of humans too much. I know, I know. She's a soft cutie under than cold exterior. Oh. Do you like her enough to know even that? Fufu I can't put my Amon in the corner. Mother. Go get ready, I'll see you in an hour. Stupid Tia making it weird. Yes yes I love you, Amon. See you soon. Click. Amon leaned back in his chair, feeling a sense of fatigue, his attachments to certain characters made his thought too complicated. It's not hard. To fuck, or not to fuck, that is the only question, dot. When did you become so vulgar? When you started putting that thing in my ass every morning and spitting in my mouth. Lies and slander. You are the one. He was about to reveal the truth when the evil fairy silenced him with her loud voice blocking all his thoughts. This lady does not know what you mean, Amon was in no rush as he sat back in his seat with a relaxed face, somehow, since coming here, he had become some playboy rather than a villain. Well, I'm a villain to pretty single women and milfs. Dot. Why are you pretending to be a good guy? Hmm. You crippled thirty men just last night. Most of them will never have kids again. How is that a good guy's actions? Eh. Or how you fucking killed a man and burnt down his house, which took the lives of five more people, dot. You forgot, didn't you? Mmm, forgive me. Sometimes, I used to think you were a psychopath. He stretched his body, reaching for his phone again while listening to the mental abuse from the dwarf, wondering why he seemed to forget the heinous deeds he would commit and act like your average good guy. 
to Kizuna Hei, drive me to see my mother and join us for a date. From Kizuna is that an order, young master? To Kizuna if I ordered you to lap dance for me, would you? From Kizuna dot maybe, embarrassed emoji, see. What made you sexually harass her for no reason? She is cute when she squirms. Dot. Why do I love you? Because I am awesome. Phew. Amon finally got rid of the strange feeling after he had sex with Alice and began to get dressed, wearing a red velvet suit with black shoes from a custom designer, thankfully, his mother had great taste as he looked at himself in the mirror. Let's head to the underground parking lot. Kizuna should be there by now. He walked towards the door with a calm look on his face before the elevator began to descend slowly. Hey, Tia. Yes. Are you in this world? T. That, I know you are. I've already gotten a hint. Then what will you do? I'm going to see you after my date with mother. Don't. Why? I'm a little dirty and not as pretty as you remember. Mmm, but I want you to be beside me. Dot. The elevator was filled with the sound of its loud engine and moving parts before it gave a sharp ding upon reaching the basement. As he thought, standing quietly beside the elevator was the Eastern Beauty Mado Kazuna who bowed slightly to him upon opening the doors. Young Master. Ah, good work Kazuna, you look wonderful as usual. Thank you for your kind words. She guided him to the shiny black executive car, used more for high-class businessmen than his usual sports cars, but it felt more official to use this car to meet his mother. Kizuna opened his door, bowing her head slightly, allowing him to pass. The moment he stepped close, he whispered before entering the car. I want to fight you again, make some time, and if you lose. I will have you become my secretary forever. Slam. Her powerful arms closed the door with a resounding slam before walking gracefully to the driver's side and climbing into the car. However, before she started the car, her eyes met his eyes in the rearview mirror. Young master, if you beat me without me holding back. I will become both your secretary and woman. But if you lose, I will never respect you and shall report everything to your mother, including your sexual desire towards her. Oh. What a feisty woman. His body suddenly leaned forward, both arms wrapped around her neck before she could even react, causing her eyes to dilate in shock. He tightly gripped her throat with his lips pressed against her ear. Do you think I would challenge you without absolute confidence, girl? I know you more than you do. I created you. Is this getting you wet? Are you feeling aroused? Of the many heroines I created, you and Elma are two of the biggest masochists. M. Master. Her voice sounded but with a hoarse voice as she seemed to choke, but he didn't release his grip. Instead, he waited for her face to change color, a smile on his lips before slowly releasing her throat and watching her gasping for air. She was amused that she didn't rush to attack or insult him. Yet her eyes never left his figure, watching him with her trembling pupils. Tonight at the same place, be prepared to die, Kazuna spoke with a cold voice, yet her eyes looked as excited as much as a masochist she was. Kazuna was also a woman that loved fighting. Especially overconfident males. So you're going after Kazuna and Rebecca first, I need Kazuna. She bridges all of Elma's gaps and lacking talents. Then Rebecca. She can become my replacement at the head of my companies to avoid any troubles. I see. What about me then? You. He looked out the window as the low hum of the luxury car began to sound and moved out of the parking lot, the bright sun shining down on his handsome face. You will be my wife and never leave my side. 